Another sunny day as the 1991 Bass Masters gathers momentum. A little bit like the wind here at Ellesmere Port. If anything, it's even more blustery than yesterday. And we've three more former champions hoping to join the 1986 Bass Master John Bancroft in the second round. There's Noel Burrows, the inaugural winner in 1982. Chris McDonald fortifying the bottom half of the draw as well. Big Chris. And Brian Duncan, champion in 84 and the current holder. He's going for a hat trick. Well, a very good morning to you. Uh, we had a little bit of history here yester yesterday. For the first time in the four years since the ladies have been competing, a lady reached the second round. Well, a little bit more history could be reached uh, here this morning. Maureen Bresnan could become the first lady bowler to actually beat male opposition here at the Bass Masters in a major Crown Green tournament. Maureen is well in front at the moment against the Isle of Man's Phil Carouche. So let's immediately join our commentary team of Mary Ashcroft and Hugh Johns. Thank you, Elton. Good morning, everybody. Yes, Maureen has been playing exceptionally well. Uh, she's gone down on... She's gone down on that particular end, lost a single there. And so Paul Carouche is 13-16 off the mat. And Maureen uh, has been, as I was saying, bowling exceptionally well. Incidentally, for our board of viewers, let's bring you very quickly up to date. Um, Stanforth, in fact, did beat Michael Leach last night. Score 21-14. Well, that's history. And here's some history on Maureen Bresnan lady who's been bowling in fact for 32 years and uh, that's one year longer than Phil Carouche has been walking about on the Isle of Man he's 31 years old and uh, Phil winner of the Isle of Man that's how he qualified for the bass has uh, has been taken all around the green by Maureen found it difficult to live with her. Maureen has got to find a, a particularly good bowl here to beat that last delivery of poor Phil Carouche. That hasn't beaten it. So it looks as though if that bowl's gone out and it looks so way, way back as though the man from the Isle of Man, Mr. Carouche, has come crash here and... Uh, picked up a two. Yes, he has. And that has considerably closed the gap. 15-16. Phil Carouche. Now Mary Ashcroft uh, alongside me, such a, an experienced lady as a bowler and as a referee. Can you read the mind of Maureen at this moment? Well, I can't say I can read the mind of Maureen, but um, I would think she's, you know, she's just had seems to have lost a concentration the previous center the one we've just seen that the um, she'd sent the block off and then uh, to Phil's round peg she sent an absolutely brilliant bowl touching the jack but Phil came and bowled her, just touched her off that mark and it may just have upset her a little bit it's just taken her off her concentration now come on Maureen you've got room here <laughs> No bias in this commentary box at all, as you can easily see. I'm not biased, I just wanted to play well. <laughs> well, if that stops now, don't run any further or it'll be in the ditch. Yes. Well, that's beaten the first bowl of Phil Carouche on this end. He's, uh, he's had his problems on the green. There's the man from the Isle of Man. But he certainly made a magnificent correction on his first bowl. That's the winner at the moment. It's a couple of feet away from the target. And bowling, oh, something over 42, 44 yards. The line looks good, but no, it's gone out underneath. In fact, it followed the exact course of her first bowl. So, Garouche picks up a single. And that's 16 across. And a dramatic change from when he was, what, 7.13 down. Phil, postal officer on the Isle of Man. Bowler, since he was 13 years old. 
So he's got 18 years of experience behind him. Early doors in this game, Mary. I think it was fair to say that uh, Phil Carouche was not using long marks. But he's now trying to stretch Maureen a bit, I think. Well, he won't overpower Maureen by going on long marks because she's a, a long-length bowler herself. Having said that, she, uh, she sent a short ball. Come on, Maureen. Yeah, she sent that one very, very short. She's bowled some brilliant balls early on in the game. You've got to admit, Hugh, it's, um, it's just this latter few ends. Yes, when she was 15-9 in front, she was looking so confident that she lost it a bit Nothing after that. But she's won this one. There, yes, she's in again. There's no she doubt she's, that one. she's got all the support of this crowd here this morning, hasn't she? I think they're raring to see a lady win. They really are. But if you look back on the history, Hugh, and if you remember when we played in the Crown versus Flat, she beat John Price yes, she in did, the first it? round. Yes. And he went on the following year and won the World Championship. And she was hard beat by Len Higginbottom. She scored as many as, uh, Noel, as Norman Fletcher did. So she, did, she has put up a good performance for us. Well, she's made a very good lead bowl to this block. This is coming well as well. It's coming nice. Just pulled up short. Just the yellow bowl is counting, but not by much. And she will need to steer clear of that blue bowl. Only needs a, a little nudge to promote it. That's not a bad bowl. That's uh, more or less in the road. Now, Phil, if he can make a contact with his first bowl and just knock it forward. Missed it, gone out. Oh, very close, though. Single for Maureen. Now then, closest any lady has come to a victory in this tournament. A reminder was uh, Maureen Lyons a couple of years ago. And she should have beaten. I think we all agreed, Chris Corral, and went down 21-20, uh, Mary. Yes, that's right. That's right. Very, very disappointed Maureen was in losing. She realised that she should have won. Maureen setting well, a mark Maureen. here, very, very close to the ditch. It's going to be a short bowl that wins it. Anything past this the jack. This one's going well. Will run on. Oh, that's unbeatable, surely. That was a bold and a half. This line looks useful. Oh. Well, that's what I was saying. Anything that goes past the jack is likely to wind up in the ditch. So Maureen needs to stay away from the block now. She doesn't want to touch it. She's making sure she's on the green as well. <laughs> It's making him play a saver. Only just. So, a single. Good morning. 1916, she leads. Well, somebody told me before this uh, match that you could get uh, the bookies were being very generous, offering three to one against Maureen winning this particular match. And I think there's a fair number of ladies down around this green this morning that uh, are thinking they might just pop down to the sales tomorrow afternoon with uh, a handful of Good money. Good lead. Look at this. Oh, oh, yes. And it's wound up in a beautiful position behind the block. Chances here, though. Very adjacent. Will Folk. 
having a look down. Yellow bowl. And the yellow bowl is counting. Now Maureen must stay away from the blue bowl. No way that she wants to get anywhere near that. <laughs> and Phil Carouche decides that he must come down and have a look. And when he gets down there, he realizes that if he can make contact with the uh, short blue bowl, just the tiniest contact will do. It's only got to be a tiny contact, Hugh, because if he hits it with any force, it's going to go to Maureen's back bowl anyway, isn't it? Yes. She's in a well, good position with that. coming with some weight. And what's he got? Another Nothing. Oh, if ever a good lead was needed, it's now. Absolutely. 2016. Now, are we going to have a little bit of history set in the Bassmasters in the next couple of minutes? This is tremendous. And look at the smile on Maureen's face. Isn't she enjoying every moment of it? Grandmother from the Wirral. She's doing the business in front of a, a marvellous crowd here again on uh, the Woodland Hotel Green at Ellesmere Port. Oh, 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 heavy, heavy, heavy. That's a goodbye job. That's the tension. That's the tension showing. Yeah, she's too eager to get a bowl away then. That's when she needed a deep breath, if ever. Come on. Now. Oh, there's nervous tension. Definitely. One too long, one too short. And Phil Carouche could easily pick up a two here. Oh, no. Wow. Oh. That's long gone. That was long gone from the side. It left his hand. As you say, it's tensions creeping in with both players. The greatest fear of uh, men bowlers here at uh, the Woodlands since ladies entered the competition, this is the fourth year that ladies have been in the competition, is that uh, one of them was going to get beaten. And I imagine Phil Carouche doesn't fancy one tiny bit being the first one. Now, what sort of a lead's he got here? What a good lead. Good bowl. Maureen Bresnan, who won the Wire Festival at Fleetwood, beating Julie Clogue to qualify for this tournament. If it doesn't win, it's a good second bowl. Good bowl. Yes, Phil Carouche will be lucky to get more than one out of this end. Gone out. Now, Maureen. One down. It's a signal from Will Folk to confirm that she is one down at the moment. What's the road look like? Curl a bit more, run Come a bit on, more, Marie. run a bit more. Yes! yes! Oh, She's done it! Done. Absolutely superb! Maureen Bresnan makes history and what a good bowl to finish on it's absolutely fantastic it really is all oh, the excitement rippling around this green maureen bresnan the first lady to beat a man yes, well here in the bass masters well absolutely uh, fantastic victory for uh, maureen bresnan certainly in the finish row what does that mean for the women's game it's a massive boost. It should, uh, it should prove to be the thing they've been hoping and praying for and make the other ladies that come to the bass play well.
Okay. Well, a, a great start this morning. A further three visits to the Woodland Hotel after this session. And by the end of the day, we'll be down to the last 16. So far, all the favourites have survived. Uh, in John Bancroft's case, uh, only just. I must say, trying to pick a winner here is a very tricky business. Roy is plump for Steve Copeland, who we'll be seeing very shortly. Now, I've got to tell you that Rob McCaffrey, he wanted a second opinion. <laughs> Plenty of action down here on the green this morning, but a real hive of activity too at the bookies where Honest Cliff Hope has got Steve Copeland as a 10 to 1 shot. Now has the clever money been heading his way this morning? There's been a Cliff? lot of money for Steve this morning and, and there was plenty for him yesterday because he's very much a man in form, isn't he? He's won, I think, at least three handicaps already this year. Roy Armstrong has tipped him uh, for the title. Oh, have, the odds, have the odds shortened at all as a result? No, they haven't as yet because, of course, as the bootmakers, we've still got to worry and he's name's Brian Duncan, as you can see, four to one. His is the one that's shortened. Well, it's nice to know they're hanging on Roy's every word. Uh, we'll see how Steve Copeland goes against David Holt. Yes, I'll go with you, Roy, don't worry. Uh, well, Copeland had a very tough match, as Rob said, uh, against David Holt, who could well lay claim to the unofficial title of being the world's most versatile outdoor bowler, English singles flat green champion in 87, and a major winner on the crown as well. Of course, you have to be to qualify for the Bass Masters. It's a big lead for Steve Copeland, Roy Armstrong's favourite, and let's pick up commentary. Roy's in the box, actually, uh, for this one with Hugh Johns. May just have won it. Oh, that's never coming back. Now then, let's see if David can concentrate fully and pick up a double. He scored a double in the very first end, but he hasn't had one since. And he's got one now. Oh, yes! Hey! I wonder if that will reinvigorate him. Five chalks adrift. David really needs to keep hold of that block now and put a little run together. took a circuitous route but it wound up counting and actually Hugh this is the type of mark that Steve Copeland prefers it's round peg fires towards the ditch it's about 27 yards and Steve is usually spot on with his bowls on this on these sort of marks David's just ran into his own bowl Steve playing for another one now this could be the match winner he's counting one needs two is it way in time no, it's gone out. Won. So, yet another end has to be completed at least. Steve strides down there with a very purposeful look in his in his eye. Not sure if his wife Yvonne is here or whether she's at home looking after their little baby Thomas Yvonne uh, will be thinking in terms of making extra plans for Steve she acts as his bold manager and we'll have to say well, it looks as though he's booked here for a little while longer Steve already has what could be the winning bowl up there. Dropping that one just a little short in the road. David Holt has it all to do now. Chances. No, nope. there's the handshake. David didn't make it. Steve Copeland, a fine and very well calculated victory to take out David Holt, 21-14.
Well, Rob McCaffrey might have been suspicious, Roy, but your man looked in pretty good nick there. Yes, he did what he had to do, and he did it in a very capable way, and of course, uh, he could now be playing Noel Burris in the next round. Yes, that really would be a fascinating encounter. There's Noel. Uh, we'll find out who he gets on a, a little later on. The, the 1982 Bassmaster, the inaugural winner, of course. Right, well, one of the sort of semi-fancy players here this week is Glyn Cookson. He was playing Steve Bradbury this morning. Uh, commentators are Brian Brett and Hugh Johns, and Glyn Cookson's in trouble. 2017. And Steve Bradbury is uh, close now to a little personal triumph to win his very first game in a Bassmasters tournament. To be fair, <laughs> he's only played here once before, but uh, anybody who wins here in this tremendous tournament reckons that is a little personal, personal triumph to be remembered for some long time. I mean, Cookson has really got to pull out all the stops here and he's just got two bowls to change things a very very good bowl against him he's on oh. he just whiskered that uh, jack as his bowl crept past i wonder if steve's going to try for a little insurance here dropping his bowl short in the road well, i don't know Bowl isn't in the road. It's counting two, so it's given Cooks more to do. He's coming with weight. It's too heavy. He got a he got a nick on the front bobby bowl, but one yellow bowl stays. And rather slowly, then Cookson and thoughtfully comes back up the green to shake hands with the winner of this match, Steve Bradbury. Steve has gone through now into the second round with a 21-17 victory well Steve Bradbury now in contention yeah he played well you know really well and uh, he upset the form there because Glyn Cookson was very strongly fancied to win that match right uh, it's been a, an eventful morning uh, so far and this afternoon should be no different Brian Duncan's with us certain to be a full house this afternoon guaranteed yeah they'll be they'll be standing on tiptoe to see Brian perform today against Barry Kitson very quickly Barry Kitson, very ebullient. Oh, yes, he'll be having a go. Barry, will he won't lie down. He won't make it easy for He certainly will not, no. For the King of Bowls. Ryan Duncan is with us this afternoon here at the Woodland Hotel in Ellesmere Port. Join us again at 10 to 2. Duncan's back. A nice big crowd again. They're here to see the big names of the Bus Masters this afternoon. Brian Duncan and Noel Burrows, each aiming for a place in the second round of this big money championship, and each expecting to be around on finals day. That's the way they are. Well, a very good afternoon to you, uh, Burrows first, and in heaps of trouble against one of the rank outsiders here in Ellesmere Port this week, Kevin Jones from North Wales. In the commentary box, Roy Armson and Brian Brett. So much trouble. 1914 he trails. The absolute outsider. Kevin Jones. And really he's thrilled this crowd here at the Woodland. Lovely lead. Foot through. Burroughs Roy, we were <coughs> talking between ourselves earlier. We thought he looked in good nick, didn't we? Yes, uh, he came here very confident and uh, thought he could do well, but uh, this green is playing a lot of tricks. It's speeded up with the wind and the sun. And uh, I have to say that this lad's played very, very well. He's, uh, and he's got a very good bowl going here, but I think he's only one. And I think Burroughs will play through at that bowl now. He's going to have a go. He's just signaled to the referee, Frank Kitchen. No, Burroughs, the inaugural winner of the Bass Masters, of course, back in 1982 on the way. The firing shot, the strike, is he right? He's taking the jack off. Oh, yes. <laughs> he lives, but Kevin Jones, very much in control. 33-year-old accountant, so 
He's got the angles figured, as Kevin. Not a player we know particularly well, Kevin Jones, is he, Roy? No, he's uh, he's not one of the players that knocks around the circuit, and he'll be new to quite a lot of people. I must confess I've only ever come across him one time. And he's uh, one thing he has got here, he's got the crowd behind him. A lot of people have backed him. They've taken the odds. He, he's two to one against before he stepped onto the green, and they're shouting for the money. <laughs> They're urging this bowl on and on, and he's waving it on. He's still left at a yard short. Burrows on the way, very quickly. But he's a champion, is no Burrows. He'll not give up easily. Left at short, he's now running down. No better. Little cloudy now here at the woodland. The green may just have lost a little bit of its early sting. Burroughs, in fact, took a very early lead. He won the first end. I must have thought, oh, that's a nice couple of them away. But Jones has never let go. And certainly the second half of the game has belonged to him. Given this much, much more like working with the bias. Length bowl, pressure bowl. Lies with two, and he needs two. Burroughs has just got to get in. He has to save. Must save. Or he goes. Now, the bias is working. Down the hill. Now then. It's certainly saved. Has it won? Has it won? Frank Kitchen thinks so. No, Burroughs taking his time. Jones. A call for a measure. They want it. Well, a bit of breathing space there, Roy, but uh, he's a champion, isn't he, Noel? You yes, that was, a, that was a particularly good bowl by Noel Burrows at the last end because um, where the jack is in that position, it's very fast, and Noel has the largest bowls that in the comp competition. They, they probably run better mm. and further than anybody else's. In fact, there's three ounces difference right. in the bowls. Yes, these that uh, Kevin are using are custom made, I notice, Wood 210 and Noel's 213. He gets it. The measure's his way. <laughs> So that's one, very relieved. No Burroughs now to pick his way around the green. He's studying very carefully, Brian. He's, uh, he's tried his three-quarter corner marks that he prefers, and they've not quite worked for him, and now he's adapting a different tactic now. He's playing round peg, he's playing thumb peg, biased towards the ditch, only about 28 yards, coming down into just short of the corner beneath our commentary position. Well, at the moment, it's all about scoring points, isn't it, and staying with the jack. But he does get himself into the position where he can go right across the green if he wins this end. Ooh, well off the line this time. Kevin is well through. Got into the tournament as a late substitute. We called up something like seven or eight substitutes because of double qualification, now Burroughs looking for the same line. Slight improvement on length. This is the mark. Well, he's holding two, the beatable two. Trails, 19-15. Urging this one on, and down the slope. Well, very, very close. Conceded. Burrows, Burrows, another one. No Burrows then. 16-19. I wonder whether that's an omen, uh, Brian. The last substitute to appear in a major sports tournament was John Daly, who came in as a substitute in the US PGA Golf Championship and went on to win it. Well, Noel's a bit of a golfer, so he knows all about that game. He knows this game as well, Roy. Interesting that he should pick out this mark, but because, again, if he so chooses, he can get back towards the corner where he really won the competition, first of all, back in 82. And then Jones. It's from the, the Burroughs Bowl and out of the count. Big end, this, Roy, isn't it? Because if Burroughs counts here, he's a little bit back in business. Oh, yes, and, uh, of course, a fellow like Noel, been playing since the age of four, he's using all those years of experience now, and look at that, what a good bowl. All he can do now, all Kevin can do is play, and play for second. Well, a 
that's on the way. It's starting to work. It's just coming off the crown and down and through and out. Oh, and he's left two. No burrows. Now we have a game. Decided against the corners. Yes, I think Knowles decided that uh, Kevin Jones is a bit weak at round peg. And he's just playing round peg, about 28 yards. Not quite on the edge of the green, about five yards in. And if he can, if he can lead well here, uphill and then downhill finish, he'll be in business. And of course the big difference in the weight of the bowls can be decisive here. He's through. There's encouragement here for Jones, and not only from the crowd. Now it's got a peg and work. A hit will be very useful. No, he's gone out and through. Now Burrows again pushes his bowl further out. Lies two, he holds two, but a beatable two. Kevin Jones, now oh, then, this surely is going to cut under. Well, has it won it? He's got a very good chance. He fancies it. Burroughs has got to agree. Jones won! Yes, it's the one. <laughs> Kevin Jones. All but 18, Kevin Jones, rank outsider, 33-year-old accountant, plays for Gresford Colliery and Rex under most of his best work around North Wales, the Shropshire area, Welsh County bowler, against the vastly experienced Noel Burrows. Look at this lead, difficult Mark Roy. Yes, it's uphill from the corner and then a very fast downhill finish. Noel's got to be very careful here with his good running balls. He's got to pick out a perfect length, but I think he's just left it short. Yeah. Just the one needed for Kevin Jones to spring the latest in a whole series of shocks today in the bus. Leeds 2018. Holds the one he needs, looking just to turn the screw a little bit more by banging another one in. Yes, brilliant bowl. Everything against Burroughs. No Burroughs. 2018, the match against him. The first ever champion, the first Bassmaster. Wondering what to do now, Brian. Wondering whether to strike or whether to, to change his peg and just try and rest on the ball or the jack. Certainly. Big decision for Noel here. Yes, the hand that they've played so far does appear to be must. He turned over. What a brave shot. He doesn't know the running. Got to find his own way in. It's holding its course. Has it got the legs? Will it run through and out, maybe? It has! Jones won! He wins it! Kevin Jones! <laughs> absolute outsider springs another major bass surprise in the first round the big winner of the first tournament Noel Burrows the original bass master is out Kevin Jones wins it 21-18 well I tell you the only thing about the the bass masters uh, they call it an unpredictable tournament the only predictable thing about the championship is that it is unpredictable so one of the heavyweights uh, goes out Noel Burrows, one of the heavyweights in the bottom half of the draw. Well, coming up next, the game's number one. There's no disputing that. Brian Duncan. Here's Rob McCaffrey. No one wins majors like Brian Duncan. He's the Jack Nicholas of Bowls. 1984, his first Bass Masters. Last year, his second. This year, his favourite for a third. Barry Kitson in round one, providing a tricky opener. I think sometimes it's an advantage to have a hard game early on because you, you can sometimes come, come probably too relaxed and think possibly you've got an easy game on paper. I mean, there's no easy games really, but we say on paper. And uh, I think if you know you've got a hard game, you, you tend to get let's say, keyed up and then uh, get stuck in and uh, hopefully come out of it. Now three Bass Masters is the aim for the master. Brian Duncan, well aware of the importance of the Bass in the Bulls calendar. Well, it's probably one, uh, one of the major events that everybody wants to win, really, obviously. There's probably the two, the Bassmasters and Waterloo. I mean, the Waterloo is a prestigious one, as well as the Basses. But it's certainly, I would say, the most difficult to win because you've got 32 top-class players in. 
Not a bad reward though if you do win, is it? Well, it's very nice, isn't it? <laughs> you don't get seven and a half grand every week. New Argos catalogue, take one. Ooh. Oh. Cut, cut, cut! I said take one! The new Argos catalogue is out now. At Max Spielman, you get the latest colour film from just one pound a roll. At Max Spielman, you get 24 photos in 24 hours for just two pounds 90. At Max Spielman, you get three hour high grade videotapes from just one pound 60 each. Max Spielman, quite simply great photo processing and great offers. After most meals and snacks, plaque pH can fall to levels where acid starts attacking teeth. These attacks can last for up to two hours, increasing the risk of tooth decay. That's when chewing can help. Because when you chew for 20 minutes after eating, the chewing action produces more of your mouth's natural defense, saliva, which helps neutralize acid within minutes. So chew Orbit or Wrigley's Extra as part of your dental routine, because chewing helps nature fight the acid attack. This channel tunnel last just boring! I mean, we made it! Bonjour, madame! What have you done to my lawn? This ain't blinking Calais, this is blinking Catford! Yeah, what's your blinking French? Have some more PG, boys. Oh, I knew that hole would make a lovely pun. You might even get some frogs in here. There's no other tea to be PG. It's the taste. Quick save. Dedicated to saving you money. Now, Pampers have the same number of nappies in most half-size packs, so it's easy to carry home 80 nappies with Compact Pampers Special Twin Pack. How? Same number of nappies, but the air's not there, and they're just as dry. Look, fewer leaky nights prove Pampers are drier than any other nappy. Amazingly dry, surprisingly small. Compact Pampers beats them all. Suppose you'll be uh, turning it over to Veg, George, now you're on a pension like. <laughs> no more bouquets for your girlfriend. Depends how you prepare the ground, Cyril. Oh, I Got a paper round, have you? Uh, no. My income bond, Cyril. They pay me income every month, regular as clockwork. Yeah, what's left after tax? <laughs> There's no tax for me to pay, Cyril. I don't pay tax anymore. Income bonds from National Savings. Income every month and no tax to pay for non-taxpayers. You're off then, are you? Oh, I can't keep the girlfriend waiting, Cyril. Would you believe Bran could be so light? Would you believe Bran could be so crisp? Would you believe light, crisp Kellogg's Bran Flakes? So light they'll lift your whole day. All right, let's see the man who's made a habit out of winning majors, Brian Duncan, once again chasing the top prize here of £7,500. Now, his opponent, Barry Kitson, uh, who despite being up against the great man, hardly short on the old confidence stakes. Uh, Barry with a nutty line in headwear there. It's 14 across, and our commentators are Brian Brett and Hugh Johns. I think uh, Barry Kitson has fancied his chances throughout this game, and uh, he's still in there, very, very strong. Yes, certainly the uh, prospect of meeting Brian Duncan didn't trouble him that much. He might have worried a few people, but certainly not Kitson, who's full of confidence, banks of confidence. He's, uh, he's never been out of things, has he? He's always been within a couple of points, and now the, the level as they sort of head home, betting on this, well, I really don't know. It's going to be awfully close. Oh, he'll be so disappointed with that delivery. It's wound up, oh, two or three yards short. Should be an easy single for Brian Duncan. But I wonder what it is because he, he fetched up on the yellow bowl that was holding at that time. Just a question of it's uh, one or two. Duncan won. Brian reckons just one, and that's fair enough. So Brian Duncan, 15-14 in front.
Fascinating in many respects, I think, Brian, that uh, Brian Duncan hasn't used the corner, the diagonal, from below our commentary box away into the far left as we look down. Uh, very much in this game, which is where he's won most of his games at the Bass Masters. Yes, he was the first to come out, in fact, after Kitson had matched him on the other diagonal. Uh, early, early doors, but now he did pull out and he went for a few little round peg marks, hoping he could pinch a few chalks, but that didn't work. Now this is working for Kitson. There's a little downhill finish in that corner, which tends to be a little bit slower than the rest of the green because the uh, trees in that corner shade and prevent the sun getting at it. And that was a beautiful connection by Brian Duncan. Just easing the jack forward and staying with it. Kitson has got a long way to go. That bowl doesn't look as though it's got the running to, to get all the way down there. I know it's a downhill finish, but uh, no, it gave up Duncan, well short. And that's an important two for Brian Duncan. He's just four chalks from home now. And more importantly, three in front. And the strange thing about this, of course, is that they start from scratch, both players, whereas Duncan's been having to give as much as five chalks to opponents when he defended his Waterloo title. He's, he's since gone out of the Waterloo, but when you think they're giving five points starting games that really are only 16 up, coming here and starting level in 21 up is a bit of a bonus. Yes, and the great man, I'm sure bowlers won't need reminding, but non-bowlers would be interested to know, I'm sure, that Brian Duncan following that bowl up the green. Four times winner of uh, the Waterloo. Oh, a nice connection, says Barry Kitson. Thank you very much indeed. <laughs> Promoted his yellow bowl to within oh, eight inches of the jack. And every chance of picking up a double here. As long as he just gets past that short bowl of Duncan's. He's got two. Oh, yes. Kitson no problem. Two. So, 16 17 off the mat. And Barry Kitson trying a new piece of this green at the Woodlands. Well, new in this game. number of little problems to sort out in this this area of the green uphill finish but if you go well past it slopes away fairly fast in that corner Brian Duncan waiting as is indeed Barry Kitson and referee Will Folk feels that the back bowl, the blue bowl, is counting at this moment. Is there any change? Oh no. Now that's the, the finish you get down the hill where it is that much faster. Quite catch what uh, Mr. Kitson said then, whether he was in or Brian was in. He fancies he's in. It's just correcting uh, referee Will Folk. Does it matter? Well, it doesn't matter now. One. And he's asking for two. He's asking for two. Did he get two? Yes, he did. So that's 19-16. coming into his, what has been over the years, his favourite corner. Brian Duncan, the master bowler on this, on this green. 
eight previous appearances in the Bass. Twice the winner, 84 against Peter Richardson. Last year against Kevin Shaw. Semi-final, or rather uh, runner-up to Robert Crawshaw in 85. Strangely enough, is the sort of chap that uh, tends to go out in the first round or, or go on and reach the final. One or the other. Well, he definitely hasn't got his two that would give him game on this end. Kitson's road looks good. It's all about running now, and it hasn't got there. No way. Now, who's got it? Kitson won. So Barry Kitson still feels he's in with a shout here. A couple of chalks down. But more importantly at this stage, he's, he's got the block. And he's got to keep hanging on to it. It's not a good lead at this stage of the game, Brian. It puts absolutely no pressure on, and if you can't do that with Duncan at 17, 19 down, well, a little bit of the nerves, even the master there leaves it short, but you certainly can't afford to leave Duncan much of a margin. Yes, he uh, left his game on the mat <laughs> with that delivery. Kitson, a little more happy about this one. Yes. Brian, some sort of a correction on weight, and it's looking good. Oh, it curled away at the last moment, and Kitson uh, reckons he's got two. Brian Duncan confirms that. Yes, two it is. Fine time to get a double. 19 across. So the pressure building on the master, Brian Duncan and Barry Kitson. Enjoying every moment of this. That's a good lead. Brian doing a fair bit of running around the green now. Needs to run a bit more and a bit more. Whoa. Well, Kitson, what is going through his mind at this moment? If he puts a second in now, it's looking tidy. No, it's going to knock the blue bowl in. No, he's, he reckons he's got his two. So, Duncan, game against him. And Brian has got to at least save. What's happening? Out! The bowl's gone out. Brian Duncan's gone out. Another incredible shock result here at the Woodlands. Brian Duncan, twice winner of the tournament, is out. And this man, Barry Kitson, has dumped him 21-19. The recession bites. The engineering union, the AEU, says there's been nearly 23...
And welcome back to the Woodland Hotel here in Ellesmere Port where things are really hotting up. There's now a 90% chance that we will have a new champion this year to add to the Bass Masters Hall of Fame. Start of the day, we had four former champions still alive and kicking. Then out went Noel Burrows, out went Brian Duncan, leaving John Bancroft uh, and Chris McDonald. Now McDonald is next on against Gary Wallace. Wallace was a semi finalist uh, last year. He's out in front, well out in front. Commentators Roy Armson and Hugh Johns. 17 11, Gary Wallace leads. Gary at this moment will be remembering that he beat Chris last year 21-12 and once again Gary sets that block out midway down the far side the left hand side of the green as we look at it That's a good lead. And I wonder, Hugh, if uh, Chris McDonnell will think back to one of the competitions that he won that qualified him for the Bass at Bunbury. In that final, he was 17-9 down, and he ran out with six twos down the edge of the green. I wonder if he might just revert to that sort of a tactic, if he can get hold of the jack. Well, that's the important thing for him at this stage of the game. But the way uh, Gary Wallace is bowling, he is really hot. Time and time again, Chris McDonald will get the block and then Gary will find the best bowl. Take it away from him. Mind you, that's not two of his better bowls. So there's chances for Gary Wallace. Uh, <laughs> Gary, but Chris McDonald here. Oh, unlucky. A touch, a good solid touch on that jacket. He Wallace, picked up two. As it is, Gary Wallace has got a single, but more importantly, he's back in an area where we can forecast with certainty where he's going to put the block. It'll be that same mark that he wants to go to on again. The one that has given him so many of his chalks in this game. Straight across the green, as you can see there, on a line more or less parallel with the grandstand. Needed to hit then, uh, Roy. I think that bow would have flown past if he hadn't made a contact. Would have just gone a little way. Yes, it's uh, only about 27 yards to here, but it's just a downhill finish, but it's reasonably lush grass just near the jack. That's a good sit. Good sit for Chris McDonald. Let's see what Gary's reply to that is. Has he made it? Yes, he has. Well, I don't know. The way the bowls have sat down, who's on? Frank Kitchen will let us know what he thinks. And he's usually right. I'd rather have you as Chris. Well, he fancies Chris McDonald, so... Chris can bowl this one with real confidence. If he can rest on one of the blue bowls again... He'll get two out of it. Yes, he's got two. Didn't need to rest. Absolutely jack high. Nestling alongside it. The relief showing on his face. A double. 13-18. Oh, is that jack going to stay on? I don't think it will. Oh, that can only be... An inch and a half, two inches from the 
very narrow ditch that there is in this sawn off section of the green. And Chris has played a little bit frightened of it there. He's, he's about five feet short, but at least he is on the green. Yes, you can see how close to the uh, ditch that Jack is. And that's going to be a very difficult bowl to beat. To get, to get past that bowl, the chances are there'll be enough running for it to go into the ditch. It's all right. It's beautiful. It's an absolute stormer of a bowl. Oh. Well, that was a magic delivery. And Gary Wallace surely has got to knock it off. He can't possibly beat it. Any sort of contact on the uh, shot bowl, the yellow bowl. Missed it. What a wonderful way to win an end. Brilliant. Single. Chris McDonald. Fourteen eighteen. And by the laws of the game, of course, uh, he has to uh, bring the footer one metre in from the ditch, which is what he's done, but no more, to gain the maximum distance possible. He's gone almost a full length in the corners here, 42 yards. Well, here's Chris McDonald on the way to a really tremendous comeback. Seventeen eleven down at one stage, and now he's only eighteen fourteen down. It's going to be short. Chris, a very popular bowler, and certainly has plenty of support in this crowd around the green at the Woodlands. Well, that's holding two. But there's a fair bit of room between the two counting bowls and the block. Last time Gary went into this corner to try and do something, he went into the ditch. And if he stays, he's the winner. He needed to hit the block. Yes, Super Bowl from Gary Wallace. Tell you what, Roy, these people of the green here are really seeing some quality bowls in this match. Yes, these are two fine young players, both very, very confident players and really good. And look at this bowl coming in. He had to get past those short bowls, had to make the contact with the jack, just like that. If he'd have missed it, he'd have gone in the ditch. So Gary Wallace sets the block out where he has had it so very often in this match, needing two, and has got another magnificent lead bowl. This is quality stuff from uh, young Gary Wallace, 25 years old, and Chris McDonald is in some bother. Chris has bowled well, Gary has bowled better. Now, is this going to curve in for two? Well, the only hope for Chris McDonald is to blast him off the green. Match against him. One bowl in his hand. And that's his only chance. Here it comes. Well, he's got one out. <laughs> Unlucky not to get the two. 2014. Might have got the two here, Roy. Oh, yes, he was very unlucky here. How he didn't get the jack off, I don't know. One ball out. So Gary's on 20 now.
Gary, who uh, only 10 years ago got so very close to winning the Junior All England, runner-up to Martin Halliwell, semi-finalist in the Waterloo six years ago, semi-final of the Bass Masters, So much quality about his bowling. And Chris McDonald, in his own right too, a really quality performer. Oh. Well, they say if there is a gap, the bowl will always go through it. Chris, still alive and well and fighting at the Woodlands Hotel. Looks as though he's got two here. No doubt. This is a gritty, gutsy di display by Chris McDonald, refusing to uh, lay down. He was out of it, what, a couple of minutes ago, when uh, Gary Wallace was holding game, but he's still there fighting. 2016 down. Lead bowl a bit wayward. Now, can Gary find a winner with this bowl? That's curving nicely. The road looks good. It stayed out, though. It stood up back end of its travel. That's a better road. Needs a bit more travel, though. Frank Kitchen has a look. Gary Wallace waits. What's he going to be told? Who's on? I just like keys, but I'll have a look if you're 20. It's up to you. Not a lot in them. <laughs> Gary Wallace, very wisely going up to have a look. The problem that uh, that Gary Wallace has got is, of course, that uh, that uh, um, Chris McDonald's balls is actually in the way. That is that ball there, and of course he's got to get past it. Ideally, he needs to just come just come past it and stop his ball just about there. So Gary's bowl on its way. Is this the winning bowl? It's going to go out at the back. Well, now it's a question of uh, having a real look. Gary must have uh, accepted that it was against him or he wouldn't have bothered to bowl that last one. McDonald's so it's one ball. to Chris McDonald. <laughs> well, this is one. McDonald, who will not uh, accept that he's had his chips. He's uh, still bombing away. All the pressure in the world, of course, when your opponent is on 20. Every bowl becomes that much more important. Gary can't afford to relax either. Straight peg. Pulled up way short. Oh, a mile and a half short. This comeback of uh, Chris McDonald's is perhaps getting at Gary Wallace now. Chris absolutely thundering down behind his bowl. Encouraging it, urging it to go in and win. 
Oh, ho, ho. had it on a piece of string, of course. Had it on a piece of string, guiding it all the way. It's got a bend now. It's got a bend now. Or I tell you what, that's two. That's two. I tell you, we've got to finish on our hands here, Roy. Oh, we really have. There's an old saying in bowls that 20 never won a game, and Chris is proving that to be true. He's got to be a bit careful, though, in his exuberance, because uh, in his final at Bunbury, uh, he had a ball, a ball kicked off for wafting. So he mustn't get too close with his, with his hand wafting that ball. So a situation that this match can be decided on this end. Chris McDonald needs two. Gary Wallace needs one. That looks a very useful lead. Oh, tremendous roar of appreciation from packed house here at the Woodlands. Gary with some work to do. Got at least to get short close. Out at the back. This could be serious. And again. Chris chasing that bowl up over the crowd. Now he wants to hold it back a bit. Hold it back a bit. Oh! He's holding game. He had game against him just now. Now he's holding game. Gary Wallace. That's going out. That's gone out below. Yes. What a brilliant comeback by Chris McDonald. Dead and buried. Just a few ends ago. Comes back from the dead to take out the man who beat him last year, Gary Wallace, in a splendid match, 21-20. <laughs> well, that really was an exceptional game of high-quality, top-class bowls. I, I think I, this is the moment I meant to ask you how you felt at the end of that. Absolutely drained. Um, all the way through the game, I thought I was never going to get back in it. Behind, behind, kept going through gaps, and I thought, never going to make it, never going to make it. And then things started going right, and. I think I've made one lead all the way through the game, and that's uh, the first ball at 19.20. I thought, what a good time to make it. I was going to say, you, you went in front at 1-0. It wasn't a bad time to retake the lead, Yeah, was it? it's a bit of a long time to wait to go back in front again at 21. Yeah, but, um, you know, that's what the game's all about. Which were you more pleased with, Chris? The, the, the skill factor that you displayed out there, or the fighting qualities? <laughs> fighting qualities, because I... I had to keep dragging myself back and saying to myself, come on, you know, we can still have a go at this, you know, let's keep going. And, uh, you know, in the end, just had a bit of luck where Gary went through the gap, I think it was, at, um, uh, I think it was 20, 2015, I think it was, and I got two. And uh, that really set it off. And well, all, all our commentators, let me tell you, have nominated um, one of your bowls when you were 18 13 down. Uh, certainly the bowl of the championship so far. Tell us about this. Yeah, well, it's um, you're coming luckily on the round peg and it's coming down and down the bank. And at this stage, I'm thinking, what's going to happen? And then it's just stuck on the edge. Well, luckily, they've cut that edge this year. and. Uh, it's a little bit flatter at the end and, you know, it just did its job.